Oop. Eh, oh, eh, 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 there we go. Neanderthals are the only hominin to have probably evolved in Europe, so I thought it was only right to uh, kick off this video with a slice of pizza, which, in my humble mustached opinion, is Europe's greatest invention. Now, before I start talking about the Neanderthals, who they were and where they came from, I should really mention that the pace of change in the field of study of Neanderthals is cracking on at a blistering speed. My main source for this video, written only in 2015, is already being contradicted by recent DNA evidence. So, if you are watching this in the future, forgive us our ignorance, our pitiful 2019 ignorance. We're uh, trying our best. Neanderthals may be the only hominin to have evolved in Europe, but they were not the first hominin to have reached the continent. At 1.2 to 1 million years old, the Cima del Elefante in Spain is Europe's earliest securely dated site, if we don't include Dimenisi in Georgia, which is dated to around 1.7 to 1.8 million years old. The number of sites dated to this period is very sparse and the evidence for hominin activity few and far between, which suggests a very small population. Evidence from Happisburg in the UK shows that by 800,000 to 1 million years ago, hominins had reached that far north, which is quite an achievement. That's further north than Mongolia and Calgary, Canada. Pretty chilly in our time, but faunal remains from the Sema and Happisburg both suggest this was a warm and wet climatic period, which is consistent with the evidence that these hominins did not yet have full mastery of fire and were probably completely naked. This low-level occupation of Europe probably continued until around 650,000 years ago, when a return to glacial conditions likely either forced these hominids out of the continent or just killed everyone. Either way, there would be no hominin activity in Europe for around 40,000 years. As for who these first Europeans were, that really is a subject of intense debate. Currently, they've been assigned the name Homo antecessor. We only have fossils from around 8 to 14 individuals. How they relate to the world's first global traveler, Homo erectus, and whether they entered Europe through Asia or Africa is still a matter for debate, we don't know. Another mystery is that these hominids did not seem to use hand axes, or at least none that we found. The hand axe really was Homo erectus's tool of choice. It was used all over the world from Africa all the way to Asia from around 1.7 million years ago. Considering that these hominids in Europe are not using it, it may suggest that they were cut off from technological advances in the rest of the world. Six hundred thousand years ago, the weather improved and a new hominid species started appearing in Europe, Homo heidelbergensis. Homo heidelbergensis lived around 600 to 450,000 years ago, and we have excellent fossils from all over Europe and Africa for this species. It was believed they were the common ancestor of us and Neanderthals. However, DNA tests carried out in 2016 on the bones of Heidelbergensis fossils from the Sema in Spain suggest that they were early or proto-Neanderthals. This means two things. First, that the last common ancestor of humans and Neanderthals is now probably pushed back to around 800,000 years ago, back into the territory of the mysterious Homo antecessor, and second, that not all the fossils currently called Homo heidelbergensis are necessarily the same species. Those from further south in Africa may belong to someone else. As to how exactly us, Neanderthals, Heidelbergensis, and Antecessor relate to each other will hopefully be further revealed by advances in DNA technology. Ever since Homo heidelbergensis crossed back into Europe 600,000 years ago, there has been a permanent hominin presence. Didn't matter how bad the glacial conditions were, Homo heidelbergensis and their descendants have been able to tough them out. And that's really saying something, these conditions were really tough sometimes. About 470,000 years ago, the ice sheet was as far south as the middle of the English Channel and Europe was 
freezing bloody cold compared to now. The ability to tough out these cold conditions though put these chaps in an excellent position to take advantage of warmer weather and when this final brutal glaciation receded about 420, 430,000 years ago we start to see the emergence of the Neanderthals exploiting this. From around 450 to 400,000 years ago, we start to see the emergence of the Neanderthal hominin distinct from Homo heidelbergensis. The main area of Neanderthal culture and evolution seems to be centered around what is now France. Which makes my pizza reference especially meaningless, but... Other than the fact that they were shorter than us, everything about the Neanderthals was a little bit bigger and a little bit chunkier than a modern Homo sapien. They had larger brains, larger than most people watching this video now. Larger eyes, suggesting they probably had better eyesight than us. Larger noses, the reason behind that is still being debated. It could just be a random inherited trait. It could be to heat air. It could be to cool air. Their big schnoz causes quite intense debate amongst uh, evolutionary anthropologists. They had thick jaws, but no chins, which would have looked quite funny to us. They also had a protruding bun on the back of their head, which is probably to help attach more muscle around their necks and jaws. Longer collarbones and broad rib cages, they really would have been very thick and stocky. Their arms and legs were shorter, but again, thicker in bone mass, suggesting they carried more muscle on their frame than we do now. All in all, Imagine a short rugby player with an absolutely massive nose and you're probably pretty close to how a Neanderthal looked. We also see signs of greater intelligence evolving around this time. Evidence that the elderly were being cared for. New types of tool emerge, level wire points and possibly even the emergence of burials. I'll cover these points in greater detail next week though when I discuss the Neanderthals supposed lack of intelligence. The reasons behind this evolution are complicated. Certainly Homo heidelbergensis was no small guy himself. This guy was built like a boxer, absolutely solid. It's often said that the cold climate that these guys lived in was the cause of their stockiness and certainly that could have played a role but it's also possible that how they hunted was a significant factor. Archaeologists and anthropologists believe that heidelbergensis and neanderthals were both ambush hunters hiding in the forest and leaping out at their large prey. We can see evidence of this from sites such as Schöningen in Germany. Dated to around 400,000 years ago, we have some preserved wooden spears next to the remains of 10 butchered horses. Neanderthal remains are also frequently injured, suggesting that they really got up close and personal with their beastly prey. So naturally, being built like a tank is really gonna help you survive if your hunting technique is running up to a much larger animal and stabbing them in the face. Really helps to be a solidly built chap. Despite all of the changes though, we still see hominids with very primitive traits as late as 300,000 years ago. Two examples in particular from Bilsingsleben in Germany and however you say this in Hungary have hominids that are so primitive they show no Neanderthal traits whatsoever. They're not even really similar to Homo heidelbergensis, more like a, a Homo erectus style hominid. This means possibly two things, that either not every Homo heidelbergensis was on the same evolutionary track as the Neanderthals, or that more primitive hominids were still trying to enter Europe from Asia and Africa. Whatever the reason for this, by 250,000 years ago, we only have evidence of Neanderthals in Europe. Did they outcompete their primitive rivals? If so, it's fascinating that the story of the Neanderthals is really bookended by their relationship to other hominids. First, outcompeting perhaps other Homo heidelbergensis or Homo erectus to be the master of Europe before eventually being wiped out when we arrived on the scene some 200,000 years later. That's a story for another week though. Thanks for watching. See ya.
Pizza, pizza. Mm. I should start an ASMR channel. Munching with Milo.